Whether you've never run a half marathon before or if you're a veteran endurance runner, I'm going to take you from zero to race day with confidence that you can be running smarter, faster, happier, and with fewer injuries. It is a prerequisite for Firm 30 bonus half marathon program that you show up being able to run five miles without stopping. This can be an easy jogging pace. If you're not quite there yet, I really recommend going back to the 10 minute plan and following the beginner runner walk to 5K. This will get you running 5K, which is 3.1 miles. And then from there, simply add on five minutes to your run time per week. Being able to jog five miles ensures that you have a baseline for your cardiovascular system, but more importantly, for your connective tissues, joints, and bones so that you don't get injured. As a mother of four and military spouse, I am all about minimal volume and being productive and smart about the minimal amount of time that I do put into running. Here's the good news. There are just two mandatory runs per week. The first run is your key run. This is the one that is going to allow you to run leaps and bounds better than other women who simply don't have the tools or the knowledge of how to program properly to have success at the half marathon distance. The best part about this is I'll be giving you little coaching videos just like you are a collegiate or elite runner so you'll have laser focused clarity of exactly the training intent and purpose of that hard run and you'll go out there with motivation just wanting to crush it. These videos are short and to the point. They're one or two minutes and then you get off for your key run. The other mandatory run that you have each week is your LSD run. This stands for a long, steady distance. Don't make the novice ultra motivated runner mistake of pushing too hard and running too fast on your LSD or on your easy days. If you get the urge to do so, I want you to remind yourself that you need your body to be a sprinkler, a deep freezer, and a food processor. Let me explain. Just like a sprinkler, the LSD run is going to develop thousands of little capillaries. You know, these are the tiniest little vessels that deliver nutrients and oxygen into your muscles. The more capillaries you have operating around your muscles, the faster and longer you will be able to run without cramping up. Your muscles store glycogen. This is the best form of readily available energy to help you run for longer distances. One of the goals of the LSD run is to lower or even deplete some of your glycogen storage. This makes the body adapt to be a better deep freezer system inside your muscles so that you can store more glycogen than you used to and decrease a little bit of storage of excess calories as fat. When you perform the LSD run correctly at an easy to moderate pace, your body is going to make more mitochondria. These are little busy bodies that are going to go around processing protein, carbohydrates, and fat and transforming it into usable energy for you. This is going to make you feel more alive and energetic and happy as you run and get less fatigued and feel like you're going to bonk. Think of this as the food processor, the mitochondria going around, doing all the work for you in your muscles. Stay with me. Two mandatory runs per week. The first run of the week, key workout, and the last run of the week, your LSD run. In the middle of the week, there's an optional run and it's back to back on the same day as resistance training workout. If you're a gal like me, you're not gonna do that optional run because I'm a low volume kind of girl. But some of you ladies out there, you thrive, your bodies can handle it and your schedules can handle it and you want to run more. So if you can, that's the timing to do it. It doesn't matter whether you do that optional run in the morning, in the evening, before or after your resistance training workout, I just urge you to make your resistance training a priority on that day. Weeks one through four, the training intent is to start increasing your aerobic capacity. You're going to do this through VO2 max workouts, strength running workouts, and lactate threshold workouts. On week five, you get an unload on both the intensity and the volume. Weeks six and seven, we're going to ramp it up by lifting the ceiling of your aerobic threshold 
and your lactate threshold so that you can feel more confident running faster for longer distances. Week eight is an unload on intensity. Weeks nine and 10 are extremely race specific. This is where we are honing in on your body's ability to process lactic acid so that you can reduce cramping later on in the race. Weeks 11 and 12, we're going to increase your anaerobic capacity so that you can have a strong finishing shoot finish. We're going to increase your cadence and turnover and then taper you off give you that valuable week and a half so that you can really show up and hit your top peak performance that maybe you've never done in your life or maybe you haven't done in years and you'll be ready to go with confidence on race day. If life happens and you miss a week of training, don't pout about it. Just move on to the next week so that you're still on target to show up to race day ready. Now, if you were out because you were ill or sick, it's really important to take a couple of days to ease back in. Consider doing at least one easy jog instead of thrusting yourself towards a key run workout one of the week, just because you want to get back on track really quickly. You need to know in advance that everyone's schedule in life will have little bumps in it. I've been racing at a fairly high level off and on for the past two decades, and even elite and professional runners will have little hiccups in their training. So don't let those hiccups get you down. Instead, be a woman of persistence and character who you're going to stick to do what you say you're going to do. And when you're injured, you need to take that little bit of time off to allow your body to heal. Unfortunately, my team and I have limited capacity and we're unable to provide individualized training recommendations for races outside of the 13.1 mile distance or surrounding your vacation programming or your particular injury history. But I want you to take the Firm 30 Half Marathon program and make it work for you and your goals in your life. A pro tip that I want you to consider anytime you have the opportunity to run on the edge of the grass along the road or if you have the chance they run on a trail, please do so because this greatly decreases impact and your chances of getting an overuse injury. Inside Firm 30 on the clickable calendars, you'll find at the bottom two stretch routines. These are no brainers. They eliminate all of the guesswork on exactly how to prevent injuries. One routine is a standing injury, so you don't have to get dirty if you're outside and in the mud. And the other routine is a more deep stretch routine that you can do indoors on your mat both extremely time efficient. I personally only stretch after hard runs, so on that key run of the week. You don't need to stretch every single run. There's enough flexibility, injury prevention, mobility built into Firm 30 that you're gonna be covered. So if you are a runner and perhaps you've struggled to interweave your running with strength training, mobility, and injury prevention into a beautiful tapestry that you can feel clear and happy and delighted in, Firm 30 half marathon bonus program is for you. I'm so excited for you to see your level of potential that maybe you've just been unable to achieve before, not because of lack of effort or will, but simply because you didn't have the tools to get there. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'm more than happy to help. Bye ladies.